Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you for choosing to be with us tonight here at Fayetteville First United Methodist Church for what I know is just going to be uh, a wonderful evening. Uh, several years ago, uh, every morning as I do my devotional time at home, uh, I turn on uh, solo piano music. Uh, I've used several um, things to do that, satellite radio, uh, uh, Fayetteville Public Utilities has a, a nice music choice channel. I put that music on in the background and I just listen to this instrumental music uh, as I read the scripture and as I pray. Um, there was this one song that kept coming on the radio. Uh, most of the time the music's just kind of taking place in the background. But there was this one song that every time it would come on, it would just make me stop. Whatever I was doing, whatever I was praying, whatever I was reading, and say, wow. And so what I did is I wrote down the name of the artist, and I thought, I'm going to look this guy up and see, uh, find out some more about him and his music. But I kept forgetting to do that until I'd hear that song again, and it made me stop. So one day I just finally decided I'm going to get up in the middle of my devotional reading and I'm going to go to the internet and I'm going to type in David Nebu's name and I'm just going to see who he is, what he's about. And so I did that. Uh, uh, purchasing 10 CDs later, uh, <laughs> I just ordered everything he had off the internet that day and received it, started listening to it. At night as I go to bed, in the morning as I wake up, as I do my devotions, even in the office throughout the day, if you come into my office, you're likely to hear his music. What a blessing it has been, not only to become a fan of his ministry, of his music, but uh, to have him here in a church that I pastor, uh, to share with you and hopefully touch you in the way that his music and ministry has touched me. I am pleased tonight to welcome uh, all the way from Eugene, Oregon, or Oregon, Oregon, Oregon. okay, okay, uh, David Nephew, uh, he comes to share uh, a special evening with us. David, thank you for being with us. Um, I want to have a prayer as, as, as we begin. Lord, I am so thankful for David and his music and his ministry. I'm so thankful for his safe arrival here in our community. I'm so thankful for his willingness to share this beautiful gift that you have given him with this community of faith. Bless him as he comes and bless all who hear him that you would speak through the keys of this piano and through the words of David's mouth in a special way. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm not used to being like limited to a mic. I like to walk around the room, you know. So this is going to be kind of wild for me because i got to actually sit at the piano, not only when I play, but when I talk. So um, I, um, I love to play the piano in the middle of the night. That's my favorite time to sit down at the piano and just play. The world is just so much quieter. And my two lovely children are in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good thing. So. You know, the end of the night is the best time for me to be creative because the world is quiet and work is done, play is done, the phone is less likely to ring, and uh, I can just sit at the piano and have some time by myself. My wife has kind of gotten accustomed to this routine of mine. She, uh, she calls this time her, tooth, her toothbrushing music because as soon as she starts brushing her teeth for bed, I'm off down the stairs at the piano, and see ya, I'm gone for a couple hours. Um, it's just, I love sitting down and playing, and it's just a great time to be with the Lord and to have some time by myself and with Him, and just to pray and uh, spend some time in the Word. And I especially love to spend time in the Psalms. 
The Psalms is really where it's at for me in terms of musically and getting musical inspiration. I love the Psalms. Um, they're just so real and written from such a heartfelt perspective. One of my favorite Psalms is uh, Psalm 77. It's a Psalm of Asaph, and I want to read to you a part of that. Psalm 77, I cried out to God with my voice, to God with my voice, and he gave ear to me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out into the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and I was troubled. I complained. My spirit was overwhelmed. You hold my eyelids open. I'm so troubled I can't speak. I've considered the days of old, the years of ancient times, and I call to remembrance my song in the night. I meditate within my heart, and my spirit makes diligent search. Verse 10, and I said, this is my anguish, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High, and I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old, and I will meditate on all of your work, and I will talk of your deeds. Your way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among your people, and you have with your arm redeemed your people. And I love this because it's so typical of the Psalms. You know, it starts out from where we are, which is sometimes we're in pain, <laughs> and we're suffering, and we call out to God. And I love how the psalmists take their pain and they turn it to praise. You know, they're stuck where they are and they see their situation, but then they call out to God and they look to him and they think of his wonderful deeds and his works, and then they realize it's all about him. And then they can worship the Lord regardless of how they feel, regardless of their situation. So I have an album that's called The Vigil, and it's one of my favorites. And it's very representative of kind of my night songs. And uh, the album starts at midnight and it ends at sunrise. And it's a night long vigil in the Psalms. I want to play for you the title track from that CD. This is called The Vigil.
So anybody here recognize that melody? Anybody? What was it? Very good. Be Thou My Vision. That's on my third CD. It's called The Last Waking Moment. 
and I'm going to be playing some more music from that for you a little bit later. Um, I want to play a really fun song from a really fun album. Um, I have a CD, it's called Postcards from Germany. And it's called this because I got to go to Germany with my wife about, oh, 11 years ago now. We had this great opportunity to go to Germany. We had some friends who were stationed in Mannheim, and they invited us to come and see him. Well, actually, it wasn't really an invitation. They, um, they sent us an email, and in the email they said, hey, if you're ever in the area, ha, 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 you can come and stay with us. And I'm just like, I'm not going to get another invitation like that. That's so, I talked to my wife. This was before we had children, so we could just, you know, up and go across the world, you know. Um, and uh, so I emailed them back, said, how does November look? Hey, we're coming. So be very careful what you invite me to. You know, I, I might just take you up on that. Um, so I went and saw our friends, and we were with them for about three days. And we had, uh, we had two weeks uh, to go and just have a great time. So we got in our car, and we just took off. And, and it was one of those wonderful, amazing, live-by-the-moment kind of things. We really didn't plan it. And it was great, because if you don't plan a vacation, you can never be late for anything. You can never really be lost, because wherever you are, that's, you can just say, well, this is where we meant to be, you know? So it's kind of been great. We would get up in the morning and just look at a map and say, what looks good? Hey, Munich looks good. Let's go to Munich. So we'd go off and go to Munich. And, and, uh, and it was just amazing. The country of Germany. I had never been outside the States before, unless you count Niagara Falls, which is kind of sort of Canada. We did cross over. Okay. So, but aside from that, never been outside the States. So, uh, but it was incredible. I mean, Castles and cathedrals everywhere. I remember driving up and down the Rhine River, which is something that everyone's got to do. I mean, there's like a castle on every hill. It's like every three miles, there's a castle. There's a castle. It's kind of like, you know, McDonald's here, you know. <laughs> they have castles instead of McDonald's. They're like everywhere. Uh, but it's so neat. And you just, you definitely know I am not in Tennessee. I'm not in Oregon. I'm not anywhere near my home. Um, it's amazing. But uh, we came back from this trip, and I had just so much inspiration from all the adventures that we had. And I ended up just, I was writing music constantly uh, that just made me think of, of the things that we had experienced, and the people we had seen, the places we had visited. And, you know, um, my wife is like big into scrapbooking, you know. So she did her scrapbook thing, and I did my scrapbook thing, and my scrapbook thing is music. So, you know, uh, so I would sit down and kind of take these little snapshots in my mind and I would put them to music and this became my, um, my album Postcards from Germany. And so I want to play for you a song. I, um, our favorite, I think my favorite stop on the trip was when we crossed the border into Salzburg, into Austria. It's just like a few miles across the border. And Salzburg is where um, Mozart was born and raised, and it's where he wrote a lot of his music. And the whole town has got Mozart fever. It's like a Mozart town, you know. It's kind of like where I live in Eugene, Oregon. You can't go anywhere. It's ducks. It's the Oregon ducks everywhere. And I'm sure here I've already seen it, you know. It's Tennessee, you know, the University of Tennessee. So it's, it's just like crazy, but everywhere it's Mozart and chocolate. And I like the chocolate part. There was chocolate everywhere you turned. But... Um, so we were there in Salzburg, and it was just incredible um, to walk down these streets, the cobblestone streets, the middle of town. It's off limits to cars, so it's all just pedestrian walkways. And it was the middle of November, so the entire town was just decked out for Christmas. Christmas lights everywhere. And I'll tell you what, it snowed, and it snowed, and it snowed. Huge snowflakes. And when the night fell on that city, it was just like the sky was falling snow and it was freezing cold but it was wonderful with all the light and the music coming out of all the shops and it was just like it was so surreal it was like it was like being in a snow globe you know it was so cool it was really neat so this song here is about the two days we spent in Salzburg just enjoying the snow and walking around in it and uh, enjoying all the lights and the festivities this is called Big Snow in Salzburg
you very much. Um, I want to play another song from the same CD. When we were in music, Munich, um, boy, Munich was incredible. Um, there was this persistent music as we were shopping down the marketplace. And uh, I kept trying to figure out where this music was coming from. I could never quite figure it out. And then so we were just shopping around, and I hear this music, and I thought it was coming out of some speakers somewhere, so I kept looking around, looking around, where is it from? And then I finally saw this little guy playing this thing that was kind of like an accordion, only it was like a bagpipe, too. It was like a bagpipe accordion mutant instrument thing. And the sound that was coming in that was, out of that was just incredible. It was just amazing. Um, it was like huge sound, and it was just like cosmic. It was, and underneath everything that he was playing, it was all so cosmically orchestrated. And then there was this, but there was this constant kind of oompa, 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 oompa. And I couldn't get that out of my head. I walked away from there, loved the guys playing, it was incredible, but all I could hear for a week was oompa. <laughs> and um, so sometimes when we musicians have songs stuck in our head, the best thing to do is just to sit down at a piano and play it out. And in this case, I just sat down and... And then I ended up writing a song with that as the bass line, and I'm just like, okay, now I'm going to be hearing this oompa music for the rest of my life. Um, but this is a song about that crazy guy, crazy wild guy, sitting there in the square in Munich, playing his mutated instrument, this Pink Floyd polka music, you know, it was very strange. <laughs> this is called The Amazing Accordion Man.
you. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy that. <clears throat> so um, I have two kids, two wonderful kids, who I love, which is a good thing because I'm their dad. And I'm <laughs> supposed to love them. Nathan is now nine years old, and Noel is six. And, uh, you know, um, man, love my kids. Before I had kids, you know, I really didn't know what I thought about the whole kid thing, I have to admit. Uh, when I got married, I was 23, and my wife was 20, and I just didn't know. I had never been around kids, I mean, my whole life. I mean, I had my friends, but like not babies, you know. In fact, until my son was born, I had never held a baby in my entire life. And uh, so I just didn't know what to do about this whole kid thing. And so when I got married, and, and I, I talked to my wife, and we talked about the kids, and I thought, you know what, would it be okay? How would you feel if we just waited, say, 10 years? before we had kids. And she agreed, so I'm like, yes, I'm free, 10 years. Yay. I'll tell you, that 10 years went really fast. <laughs> but we did wait 10 years and, uh, until we had kids. And um, I, was, uh, I was 33 and still never held a baby in my entire life. And now my son is coming and um, I was so afraid. <laughs> I just didn't know what to do with myself. But you know, God does just wonderful things. He sometimes puts us in situations we think are kind of bad, but God turns those things to good so wonderfully. My wife had complications in her pregnancy. So when Nathan was born, my wife couldn't even hold him, forget, change his diaper or give him a bath, even feed him. She just wasn't there. And so it was just me and my little guy for the first three days. And I'm, I gotta tell you, it was uh, pretty intense. But I was so glad that I had that opportunity to spend time with my little boy. God put me in a position where I had to grow up right now and do this. And I'm so thankful because I just know myself and I know that if everything had gone as planned and my son was born, I would have just said, uh, here, you know what to do. Go for it. Hi. <laughs> you know, and I just know I would have kept my distance because I know me. But God said, no, you're not. <laughs> and I was there front and center with him. And you know, he and I just bonded in such an incredible way. I'll never forget, you know, my biggest fear was, what if, I never told my wife this because I'd probably get, you know, hit or something. <laughs> this is not something that a pregnant lady wants to hear her husband say. You know, honey, I just, I don't know if I'm going to love him. What if I don't love him, you know? This was going through my mind, though, you know, how many of you guys that are dads for the first time thought this? What if my son is born and I don't feel anything? What if I feel nothing? And I'm the terrible monster because I don't feel this, whatever I'm supposed to feel. I was so scared of that. But he was born and I got to be with him. And um, I'll tell you, I just fell in love with my son. Fell in love. And uh, I'll never forget... Um, holding him and having him in my arms in that rocking chair. And I had just fed him and he was asleep in my arms and I was just looking down at him and I was just, I just felt just love overwhelm me. And I just told him, Nathan, I love you so much. I would do anything for you. I would die for you. And I felt my heavenly father poke me on the shoulder and said, David, this is how I feel about you. I love you like this. You're my little boy. You're my child. And I love you with a more perfect love than you have. And for the first time in my life, I really understood what it meant to call out to our Father in heaven and to cry out and say, Father, and understand what it means to be a child of God. And now I understand God's grace. 
I really understand his mercy because as a father, you know, being a parent is all about mercy and grace, you know. We serve a great God who is our Father in heaven and who loves us and we're his children. And I know that my son, I will always love him no matter where he does or where he goes, and I will always be there for him. And I know my Father in heaven is always there for me because he loves me in a, with a better love than I could ever love my children with. So what a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing. Um, becoming a father just transformed me and our family. And shortly thereafter, um, three years later, we had Noelle, our little girl. And I was, found myself writing a lot of music for my kids. I wouldn't call them really kids' songs so much as they are just songs that dad's writing for his kids, sweet melodies. And this, these all became a part of a CD that I have. It's called Sweet Dreams and Starlight, which is made up of songs that I wrote for my kids. And uh, I'm going to play for you a song from that. This is the title song. Um, it's called Sweet Dreams and Starlight. It's the title track. And I really wanted to capture the starlight for my kids, so I started kind of writing this thing and just kind of playing with this idea of trying to, trying to catch, uh, capture the sound of the twinkling stars and the innocence of childhood. So hope you like it.
Thank you. Thank you very much. My father was an interesting fellow. He was a street preacher. And that's always kind of an interesting thing to grow up with as a teenager. People say, hey, what's your dad do? Well, he's a street preacher. Kind of interesting. I'll tell you what, it was really crazy when I brought my first girlfriend home. It's the last time I ever brought my girlfriend home. <laughs> my dad loved the Lord. He loved the Lord with his whole heart. And he couldn't stop telling people about Jesus, which is a great thing. It's a great thing. But when you're 17 and you bring home your girlfriend, and the first thing your dad says to her is, Hi, it's so nice to meet you. Do you know Jesus? You can just imagine. Oh. So, uh, but my dad, you know, he, uh, he loved the Lord so much. I, he really instilled such a strong faith in me. He was a great father, great example, because he was one of these guys that, yeah, he went out there with his Bible and he was preaching, but when he came home, he was that same man, you know. He loved the Lord at home, too, not just on the pulpit. And uh, toward the end of his life, my father um, spent months and months in Africa. He, he was on the street corner, and a guy saw him preach, and this guy happened to be a bishop of a church in Kenya. And so he approached my dad, and he said, well, where are you going to be? And my dad would tell him where he was going to be preaching. He went and saw him a few more times, and he finally came to my father, and he said, would you like to come to Africa? So my dad would go over to Africa, and he was over there for months at a time in Kenya and Uganda and Ethiopia, <laughs> preaching. And I just love it, and I've, loved, I've seen the pictures of my father in Africa, and it's such a wild thing, because here in the States, I mean, I've seen my dad preach. My dad is like a Pentecostal. He preaches, man, and you can hear him for a few blocks. <laughs> Guy had a voice. But when he preached on the street, as you could imagine, you watch most people go on the other side of the street and walk. In Africa, they loved him. He's preaching, there's just thousands and thousands of faces, and it just blows my mind to see my dad up there. And uh, he had an interpreter, of course, but he would tell me all the stories about going and he'd preach, he'd go from place to place, and he'd start out in the morning and he wouldn't even know where he was going. The, the bishop would come and he'd introduce him, say, to his driver, and he'd go in the Jeep, and then off they go, and he'd, he'd be gone all day long preaching. Through. And um, what an amazing thing. They called him Brother Hallelujah. That was their name for him, and that really fit. Uh, my father um, was diagnosed with cancer in 2001, and um, that was kind of a strange thing, um, to see this man who had, to me, been really a giant, a giant of a man all my life, because he was always so bigger than life. Um, and with the cancer, he eventually kind of just became a shadow of who he once was. And, but even though he became a very quiet, quiet man, very much not my father, but though he became very quiet, my father never lost faith. He was always faithful, and he was always saying to me, David, you gotta turn the pain into praise. You gotta turn the pain into praise. And just praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And what an example for his family. To see a man that you knew was who had just become this thin, thin man, but still loving Jesus and still being faithful and still preaching in his quiet, quiet way. The only time my dad ever preached quietly in his whole life was right before he died. <laughs> but what a man. Um, and he inspired a lot of music in me through those times. and. Um, I wanted to kind of take this thing that my father had said, you know, turning your pain into praise, and I wanted to turn it into something musical. And so I um, started work on this CD called Overcome. And it was an album of, of, of kind of half of it was original music that was pretty intense, really, and then, 
And then half of it was worship and praise songs and hymns. And the whole point of the album was really, it was about suffering, but it was about the process of passing through that suffering. It was about being faithful and being steadfast and trusting God and knowing that even when all is dark and when the world is just, when, when all we know is suffering and when all we know is pain and we experience that, we still know that beyond the pain, beyond the suffering, there is life everlasting for those who believe. And that there is an eternity without pain, an eternity without tears, an eternity with just joy everlasting. And that this time that we have now is just a moment. It's really just a moment. It's just a blink of an eye compared to what waits for us. And how wonderful that is if we can cling to that. And you can be overcome by suffering or you can overcome suffering. You can be overcome by hardship and difficulty, or you can overcome that. You can be overcome by confusion and sadness, or through Christ, you can overcome confusion and sadness. And just be faithful and hold on to Christ, cling to Christ, when all you can see is pain, and when all you can see is the big question of what now? Just cling to Jesus and trust him because he knows and he's there and he never leaves us. We are his children. He won't leave us any more than I would leave my son or my daughter. When the time is right, I will pick them up and I will take them home with me just as our Lord will do with us. I'm going to play a couple of songs for you from my Overcome CD. I'm going to play the title track, which is called Overcome. And then I'm going to turn that into praise, and I'm going to turn it into this praise song called As the Deer.
to play a few more songs, just uh, probably three or four more. Before I do, I thought I would invite you guys just to stand up and stretch, because I need to. <laughs> I want to thank you guys all for coming out. I really appreciate it. Coming to hear this guy play piano who probably most of you have never heard of. Who is this guy and why is he here? Well, I don't know. So um, I'm going to play a song now from uh, my newest album. It's called Adoration. And it is an album that is entirely made up of hymn arrangements. And so these are a lot of hymns from my childhood. Um, this, really, this album came about really as a result of the Overcome CD. As part of the Overcome CD, I had worked up a couple hymns, including It Is Well With My Soul. Um, and uh, I put them on that CD. And then I had a friend who invited me to play piano at their wedding, and they asked me if I would play Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus for their wedding. So I went out and got my hymnal and found the song and started working on it. And um, as I was just going through the hymnal, I was just... Um, just blessed to see all these great hymns that I hadn't sung since I was a kid. But I still remembered them, you know, because those hymns, when you sing those hymns, you really sing those hymns. I mean, all seven verses, you know? And uh, so those melodies just really stick in there. But um, I was just so delighted to sit down with the hymnal and spend some time and just kind of reacquaint myself with some of these songs and have some fun. And so pretty soon I, I thought, you know what, I'm going to do an album of hymn arrangements. I'm going to take some of my favorite melodies and start to, and just kind of put them together and see what I can do. And it actually turned out to be one of the most uh, difficult projects that I had ever done. It was really tough. Because the more I got into it, the more I realized what I was doing, which was I was taking these songs which were dedicated to God. These are songs that had been sung as worship and praise songs for generations. You know, and who am I to come and start messing with these melodies? It was kind of like, you know, it's like if you decide you're gonna, you know, go and Oh, here's the Mona Lisa. I think I'll do my own version. You know, you don't touch the Mona Lisa, you know. And I kind of started to feel like that with these songs. I'm like, what am I doing? I, you know, um, these songs were just such amazing treasures. Um, so I really found myself um, becoming very aware of what I was doing. And it became so, such a desire in my heart to make sure that what I did was really and truly worship and full of reverence for these songs. And um, so it took me a long time to get it done, but I did and i um, really happy with the results. So the album is called Adoration and this is a song you'll probably all know, Amazing Grace.
you very much. And uh, this is another one from Adoration. This is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. This was actually a pretty simple one to do because um, it was really easy because the song, the hymn is so full of imagery and I just really picture this, this little spring of water bubbling up and becoming more and more water until the spring of water becomes a fountain and the fountain continues to bubble until it becomes a river. And so, as I play this, I just think about the water and then becoming this rolling river. So um, a number of years ago, my wife had this amazing dream, and uh, she was really at a, a very difficult point in her life, and um, it was one of those times where, as a husband, all I could really do was pray for her and just be there to listen 
when she felt like talking to me, you know? <laughs> um, and it was just a hard time. There were a lot of things going on with her family, and, um, and uh, she had this, this dream that completely changed her outlook on life, it changed everything. Um, and uh, in it, she met the Lord. The Lord spoke to her. And he let her know that he was there with her. And the dream is actually very um, detailed. There were so many things that were going on. It would take me a half an hour to tell you. It was pretty amazing, the things that she had seen. But um, she woke up from this dream, and uh, I told her that, uh, she told me the dream. I'm just like, you've got to write this down. You have to write this down so that you never forget. And so she did. And I took her dream, and I put it to music. And that became my third album. It's called The Last Waking Moment. And in this particular song, there's a, a scene in her dream where she is there with the Lord, and there are thousands and thousands, as far as she can see, as far as she can see there are thousands of other people there with her. People um, all together meeting each other and rejoicing. And surrounding all of these people, there's this ring of angels. And the angels begin to ascend to heaven. And as they do, all of the people ascend with the angels into heaven. And she describes to me how she saw the earth beneath her feet go further and further away. And they just were going out into space. And she said they were constantly accelerating, but there was no sense of speed. And there was a moment at which she could feel she was going to cross this barrier into someplace else, beyond the universe, beyond what we know. And she could just feel that tension as about ready to pass into this other realm to heaven. And she hit that, and that's when she woke up. And she's like, oh man, I'm still here with him. <laughs> But this is, um, this is that song um, that I wrote to try to capture that moment.
I'm going to play one last song for you. This is, um, this is also from the Last Waking Moment CD. This is um, my wife's dream seemed to take place in Revelation chapter 21. So I wanted to read that to you in part. <clears throat> now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. And then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no sorrow, nor crying. There will be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, these words are true and faithful. And he said, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The song is called No More Tears. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. I just want to thank um, Pastor Tommy Ward for bringing me here. Um, he likes my music a lot. I love it when I hear stories about somebody that hears one song, and so they go to my website and buy all my CDs. That's faith, I'm telling you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I do have CDs available if you're interested to take a look at those, and um, if you'd like to sign up my, for my mailing list, I have a little uh, mailing list sign-up card out there on the table. You can fill that out, and um, I'll just send you a notice when I come play this area, let you know when I have a new CD out, and I actually have a new album coming out in uh, about two months, before, before Thanksgiving, I'm hoping it will be out. And so I'm really excited about that. It's been a couple years, so. Anyway, thank you guys for coming. I hope you had a great Wednesday evening, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again sometime.